Ooh. Hey, Nina. I was trying to show you guys some, um, my flu, cold and flu fighting regimen. <laughs> Hi, Mom. Hi, Cynthia. I, uh, am trying to uh, keep from getting this cold. Hey, Kelly. Um, here's what I'm taking. I've got, um, over there in the kitchen, I don't know if you can see it, the diffuser's going with thieves in it. We'll get to how this relates to our uh, teaching in here in a minute. Good morning. <laughs> so I've got thieves going. Good morning, Cynthia. Airborne, I take everything. Basil, as I've had good luck with it in my lungs. Thieves spray. And uh, emergency. Whoops. I take everything I can get my hands on. Natural. Everything natural I can get my hands on. There's some of my oils. Um, so let me get you turned around here. That's what I'm doing this morning. Uh, hey. Hey, hey, hey. Good morning. Um, dousing myself in stuff because I feel a cold creeping up on me. It might have something to do with twins coughing and sneezing directly in my face last week. <laughs> So I felt pretty, oh, sorry, sorry, I put my big face in the phone there. I felt pretty sleepy yesterday. Oops. Yeah, yuck. So, um, Nina, you're well prepared for cold and flu season now. The minute you feel the cold coming on, you start slapping thieves on your feet. Thank you, Cynthia. Hey, HJ. You start putting thieves in your diffuser, Nina, and, um, you can put it on your wrist. I have it on my wrist today. You can go to bed, put it on the bottoms of your feet. Good morning, Heidi. Nice reading last night. HJ got a reading from Sarah last night. It was beautiful. So, um, your daily spiritual practice, I don't believe, keeps you from ever getting sick. But when you do get sick, it can definitely influence... Uh, how you go through it or if you go through it. I've had a lot of luck for several years now with catching a cold in the very first hint that I'm getting it. A mantra. Yeah. Oh, yes, Nina, that's exactly how it works for me, too. You put the thieves on when you feel it coming. You keep putting it on several times a day. You run it in your diffuser. Some people make a tea out of thieves oil because it's got cloven. Um, lemon and stuff in it. I think that sounds terrible, but um, some people do it. And then um, rest and watch your watch the story you tell yourself about being sick. So we'll come back to that here in just a second. How's everybody doing this morning? Uh, Michelle, you have to watch Sarah's replay because about halfway through it gets pretty ridiculous. Uh, you spray it in your office. Yeah, Thieves Spray comes in a spray bottle that you can spray around in your office. Pretty convenient. Michelle, did you do a scope? Did I miss it? I'm, I'm not getting notifications now like you guys were. So, my name's Michelle Wolf. in case you don't know. I think it's both. I think it's both, isn't it? I think she answers to both. My name is Michelle Wolf. We meet every morning to talk about A Course in Miracles to make what The Course in Miracles talks about practical in our daily lives. Um, you can find me after scopes on CaddyshackDesigns.com. I do Young Living Oils. Hey, Linda. Um, or hey, you. Yeah. <laughs> I do um, Young Living Oils. I'm a portrait artist, um, teacher, coach. Whatever. Hey, Linda. Uh, we were just talking about um, thieves oil and using it at the first sign of a cold. And then I was just introducing myself. I am a portrait artist. Yeah. Yeah, I'll see if I can spin you around here. That's my work on the wall. That tiger and that old man, the dish towel and the dog over there. Uh, can't see your comments, sorry. I do custom work from photographs. Oh, lift it up. Oh. 
Can you guys see that? Tiger. And these are all, I mean, these are all on Fine Art America as um, cards and prints and whatnot. There's tons of stuff on Fine Art America. That dish towel is one of my favorites. And the old man. Those are charcoal on pastel paper. My other originals are down at a salon near Atlanta. So I don't have them to show you. The dish towel is available as a print on Fine Art America. I love it. I really do. That's one of my favorite ones. I can't give that one up. I have a hard time letting the originals go. <laughs> so, uh, I'm on Fine Art America. If you Google my name, Michelle Wolf, Fine Art America, my art stuff will come up and everything is there. Um, I'm a Reiki master too. HJ, she's a Reiki master also. So you can find me here. There's a list of what I do. On the website, there's tabs at the top. It tells you everything I do pretty much. I believe the art stuff's there too. I'm also a writer. I'm easily bored, you can tell. So I have a lot going on all the time. Um, I can't afford to get sick though because uh, Morgan's going to Manhattan for a, a work thing this weekend. Thank you. I gotta have. I gotta help with the babies. I'm gonna help set her with the babies. So things are gonna be chaotic for a few days. So our reading for today from this gigantic book, Course in Miracles. Uh, a lot of people have attempted Course in Miracles, myself included. Oh yes, yes. I have the Bragg's kind that has the mother stuff in it. Yeah, good idea. I'll add some of that. So today's lesson is. The language in A Course in Miracles stops a lot of people from reading it because it's bulky and it's a little hard to understand. So every day we talk about it and then try to make it make sense for our daily lives. Like, what do you do when you're sitting in traffic? What do you do when you hate going to the grocery store? What do you do when you have a shitty boss? Um, so that's what we do here every day. Today's is good. It is... Lesson 293 in Part 2 of the workbook, for those of you who follow along in the main book. All fear is past, and only love is here. So once all fear is gone, only love remains, because there's only those two things. All fear is past, because its source is gone, and all its thoughts gone with it. Love remains the only present state. You made it just in time, Tanya whose source is here forever and ever. Love remains the only present state whose source is here forever and ever. Can the world seem bright and clear, safe and welcoming, with all my past mistakes oppressing it and showing me distorted forms of fear? Of course not. Yet in the present, love is obvious and it affects its effects apparent. All the world shines in reflection of its holy light, and I perceive a world forgiven at last. Okay, the world hasn't changed, you've changed. You're, you perceive a world forgiven at last. The best thing, the best, best prayer is uh, change me. Don't worry about changing my husband or changing my children or changing my boss. Change me so that I can see the truth. Change me so that I see the world in its true reality, which is love. Father, let not your holy world escape my height to my sight today. I perceive a world forgiven at last. And we can have that holy instant in any instant if we ask for it. Father, let not your holy world escape my sight today. Nor let my ears be deaf to all the hymns of gratitude the world is singing underneath the sounds of fear. There is a real world which the present holds safe from all past mistakes. And I would see only this world before my eyes today. So it's making a conscious request, a conscious prayer to let me see the world through eyes of love. Let me see the people I am in conflict with through the eyes of peace. Let me see them as the people who are struggling the same as I am to get through the day. 
to get through all the things we deal with to survive living. Let me see the truth of who they are. Uh, Father, let not your holy world escape my sight today. So you can say, Father, Mother, Source, help me see the holiness. Help me see the holiness in the world today. Open my eyes. Let my ears hear all the gratitude in the world. For every horrible thing you hear on the news, if you talk to people and look for it, you can find a hundred things to counterbalance it that are positive. Um, CNN and NPR, and I'm very guilty of um, being addicted to NPR. All that we're hearing is a very small percentage of what's really going on in the world. So we don't hear the stories of people like Linda saving a dog out of traffic. Um, that sounds like a simple thing. It's not. That's a life. That's a life that is in existence today because she and her family did something, took an action. Um, every person that you've ever helped, every person that you've ever saved with a word or a prayer or a letter sent just in time or a phone call just in time, those are not small things. Those change the course of time. Um, those change the course of history. You may be the person who stops someone from self-destructing. You don't know. He is adorable. I was going to ask you about him last night and I forgot. What, uh, what did you name him? All the world shines in reflection of holy light. Yes, they know. There is a real world which is held safe from all past mistakes. Bento. It means blessed. That's beautiful. Oh, I think you told me that now that you say it. Um, love remains the only present state when we choose it. And choosing it is a constant process. So it's not, we don't choose it. I say this all the time. We don't choose it and then check a box and we're done. It's a daily, minute by minute choosing. It's a daily, minute by minute prayer to, oh gosh, I'm judging the hell out of this person. Uh, help me see the light of who they are. Help me see them as the holy my holy brother, my holy sister, help me see that. Because we lose sight of it. When you are a person who draws or paints, you have to learn to see um, colors that you don't normally see. With your, reg your regular vision, you don't normally perceive everything that's actually there. That's the challenge of drawing from. My drawings are really realistic, so I spend a lot of time um, looking for what's actually there. And when I'm drawing, um, when you're drawing from a photograph or from a live model, you have to draw for a while and stop. As you're making mistakes on the paper, they, you can see that they are in conflict with the image you're drawing from. But if you keep going, your brain will adjust and it won't see the mistakes anymore. So you'll step away from your drawing and come back a few hours later and be like, oh my God, how did I get so far away from the drawing? Because we start to accept our mistakes as reality. So what's on the paper, even though it's completely gone wrong from the image that's laying right beside it, um, we make the mistakes the reality. Our brain just adjusts. Uh, it's a really fascinating process. You learn to see light and shadows in completely different ways. Um, the color especially just baffled me. I was like, how can this have been here all this time? And I never saw it. I never saw the billions of different shades of orange until I started actually studying it and really, really looking at it and really, really wanting to perceive it. And I still don't perceive color as well as some people. Yeah. Oh, well, good. I'm glad it resonates with you. I work in black and white because I can... Well, we figured. 
Uh, Rhonda, we're, we did do the reading, but it's, it's pretty short. It's just asking to see the world that really exists. And we were talking about drawing. Um, yeah. And seeing in a new way. Um, we get you girl. Um, we were talking about Rhonda, how, when you draw or you're a photographer or whatever, you start to see the world in a different way because you're looking and you're asking to see it in a different way. So light and shadow is, um, you know, I prefer black and white because I see the 10 or 15 different shade variations. <laughs> you wish your phone got you. Your first baby daddy is an artist and his ability to discern colors. Blows it. Yeah. Um, a woman I studied with, her name is Judith Dickinson and you can, she's on Facebook and stuff, but her ability to perceive color is uh, astounding. And it's not something she was born with. You're fine, Rhonda. You're fine. Um, it's something she trained herself to see. Seeing the negative space changes perception. Yes. So if you're looking at an object, um, say you're looking at my face. Instead of looking at my face, look at the space around my face. And that makes the world look different. Um, it's a shift in perception. So just like when you're drawing and you start to allow the mistakes to become the reality of the drawing... Our, our thinking errors become the reality of our life, our day-to-day -day existence. Um, to correct it in a drawing, you draw for a while and you step away. So my preference is to have two drawings going at the same time. So when I step away from one, I can pick up another one and work on it for a while. And then come back to the one I sat down and I can see where I'm drifting. I can see where my my stuff is gotten off key or out of proportion. Um, but you have to have that space to do it. We have to do the same thing in our lives. We have to, if we stay too long gone, if we're too long gone from source, if we're too long um, disconnected from love, uh, we forget what it looks like. We forget what it feels like. And so we don't have it to compare. Does that make sense? So with a drawing, you take a break, you come back, you compare the original to what you've got in life. You get off track by not, by forgetting to compare the connection to source and how you feel when you're in that state to your current reality. The, the state of mind that you get in when you're connected to source and you're so deeply grateful, um, you compare that to your life and you try to make them match. A lot of artists throw out very good work because of a mistake, because we see the mistake and nobody else does. So there's all kinds of metaphors in creative pursuits. Um, so let me... I had a section I was going to read to you, and the marker just fell out, so maybe we don't need to read it today. Maybe we'll read it a different day, um, unless I can find it here real quick. That's so, uh, I've got too many markers in this book. Things that I'll flip through. Sometimes this is one of the books that I'll just flip through when I need an answer. Oops, that might be it right there. What do you guys do to keep from getting sick? Oh, I was going to say, when you get sick, your story about being sick or avoiding a cold can influence how long it takes. It can influence if you get it, and if you get it, it can influence how long it lasts. I'm definitely on the edge of catching it. Oil, sleep, hot tea, yeah. I'm doing, I'll be getting some extra sleep today because tomorrow's Twinkie Day. I can't find it. It's okay. We'll talk about it a different time. Um, I guess the whole point for today is asking to be, asking to see the world. Socks on your feet. Do you put something on your feet and then put socks on? Because of those germy little twins. Linda. Alkaline forming foods, of course. Yes. Um... You know, the twins have been sick for a week or so, and they were blowing germs all over me last week, and now I feel like I'm I'm catching it. 
You just need hot feet. Yeah. Um, that makes sense. Yeah, those germy twins. So yesterday I felt sleepy all day, and then today I woke up and I was like, oh, I feel it coming on. So I'm hitting the oils, I'm hitting the airborne, emergency, whatever. I'm going to add some apple cider vinegar. Yeah. Yeah, you can't avoid it. The best you can do is keep your immune system up. Yes, I think they're still sick because the um, their moms keep the house too cold. Yeah, babies are gross. Babies are not my favorite. I love them, but um, they're not my favorite. I like when they can go to the bathroom, when they can tell you they're hungry, and they can feed themselves, and um, they can wash their little germy hands and blow their little germy noses. <laughs> Four-year-olds are my favorite, and then teenagers. <laughs> Vitamin C tablets, yeah. Daycares are gross, yeah. So be careful uh, what you tell yourself about um, getting, getting sick. <laughs> oh, you too. Teenagers. What age group do you teach? You're teaching young adults. Nina, at the college that you're at. What do you do, Nina? If you tell yourself, I always get a cold in December... Oh, three to five year olds. Yes, they're great. I love them. I love the storytelling ages where they just tell you these outlandish stories and it's hilarious. Oh, special needs kids. Bless your heart. Um, Catherine's son is a uh, high functioning autist, autism, autistic. Um, he's really entertaining. <laughs> I like him. Um, so. When you tell yourself stories about catching colds, we can be inundated with marketing that tells us, oh, now we're supposed to get sick. This is the time for us to get sick. It's cold and flu season. Yeah, he is one with stories. Yes, I do love them. Um, be careful about that. Like, watch what you say to yourself about winter. Um, watch what you say to yourself when you feel a cold coming on. Oh, I feel a cold coming on. Well, now I'm going to get it, and I'm going to be sick for two weeks, and I'm going to feel like hell, and, you know, be careful of those things. You get to volunteer in your five-year-old's class a day. Yay! Oh, you must miss him. You must miss him a lot. It's probably good to have time to yourself, but I bet you miss him a lot, too. When I hear that on the radio, <laughs> you say, delete, delete. Michelle says, delete, delete. It's good that you're aware of it. So be aware of the messages messages that you're getting that are meant to sell you products. Although oils are products. <laughs> uh, vitamin C tablets are products. Is it genetic? Cynthia, first of all, I'm very sorry to hear that. Uh, I'm really very sorry to hear that. And so I'm guessing that it's genetic based since you're going to be tested. You don't have to answer that question. Cynthia, I'm so sorry. Very, very sorry to hear that. Marfan syndrome, okay. We're going to pray really hard that you don't have that. And if you do have it, we're going to pray really hard for your continued health and your dad. Do you want your dad added to those of us who keep prayer lists? Rhonda, I hate when my husband whines too. Watch your stories about it. Um, yes, okay, so Cynthia, can we have your father's name? I'm going to get a pin. I'll be right back. Sitting on such a squatty little stool. It's a little bit hard to stand up. Cynthia Davis. Art Davis. Cynthia, are you on Facebook? 
Michelle started a um, a Facebook group for this morning group of regulars. It is a good name. It's a strong name. So if you're on Facebook, we can get you added on there. Oh, okay. Yep. I hear you. You can make a fake one if you want. <laughs> it's it's all how comfortable you feel being a little duplicitous. Um, I worked with a lot of police officers and um, social workers. <laughs> sometimes, um, so sometimes people will make a fake Facebook profile so that they can be connected to friends and family and stuff and um, not get in trouble. You could make one just for our group. Yeah. Could be Cynthia Grace or something. De definitely something you don't want your friends. I mean, we definitely don't want you to get in trouble at work. But we would like you to be a part of that little support network that she created. It's nice. It's nice to be able to carry on um, our motivation from the morning, from when we meet in the morning to all throughout the day. If you don't feel good or you're, you catch yourself being bummed out, you can pop in that Facebook group and just read some of the posts or post a request for a prayer or, or whatever and um, just get some upliftment. And then I have a group called Life Support where positive things are. It's just meant to be able to pop in. And uh, yeah, so um, D, um, send me an email, uh, caddyshackdesigns at gmail.com or text me. You can text me. You have my phone number, so um, do that, and I'll add you to those two groups. We have to have it, right? <coughs> we have to have support throughout the day. <coughs> yes, we have to have support. I don't like to be in it. I don't always make these scopes, but I always appreciate the conversations. Yes, we love it when you're here. <laughs> I will, uh, what, are we friends on Facebook yet? Find me, and, um, or anybody on here, find one of a, I think we are, aren't we connected on Facebook? Okay, you can go to facebook.com forward slash L Michelle Wolf, and you can get to my personal page that way. And you have to come through my personal page to be added as a friend. I have a business page, but we can't add each other as friends through that page, as Rhonda and I found out. <clears throat> so we'll add you. Much strength and love to you, your dad, and you will be in my prayers. Absolutely. Absolutely. I think that's all I have for today. Um, the schedule for the next week is going to be pretty crazy. My intention is to still get to you before noon Eastern. So tomorrow is a twin day. So we'll definitely be talking before noon on Eastern. Then I'm home Friday, home Saturday. Saturday night I go back down to Loganville. Then I'll be there Sunday and Monday Coming home late, late Monday night or early Tuesday morning. Tomorrow's Wednesday. Right. I have a whole nother day. Tonight's Desire Map Workshop. What am I thinking? I've gone insane. I'm so glad you said that. I have a whole nother day to rest before the crazy five day um, thing starts. So Thursday twins, M Sunday twins, Monday twins. Back home Tuesday and Wednesday, and then Thursday and Saturday twins for several months. Oh, no. Bye, Nina. Have a great day. Okay. I'm going to wind this up. I'm going to just be writing today. Probably surfing me some Facebook. i got to order a cat fence. We're ordering a big uh, cat containment fence to make uh, a safe place <clears throat> to take our cat catio and make it bigger since we have five now they need more outdoor space otherwise we're going to kill them all <laughs> we're going to kill ourselves uh quick draw mctexy text <laughs> quick
withdraw. Make texty text. <laughs> she is the fastest texter I've ever seen. <laughs> I said, <laughs> I'm like, click, click, damn it, autocorrect, back up, click, click, damn it, click, click. I love it. <laughs> I love your new name, Linda. <laughs> your new nickname. You guys should watch Sarah's uh, Sarah Ballard's replay from last night. That gets pretty ridiculous too. That Gannon Carr, she knows some creative uh, cuss words. She does. <laughs> Quick draw, McTexty text. <laughs> oh God, that's funny. You're making my my nose is starting to run. Oh. <laughs> okay, what's your stories today? I can't keep up. She's like, bing, 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 bing. she totally does. She's so fast. She's so fast. You too, Cynthia. We'll be thinking of you and putting you on our list. <laughs> we'll look for you. We'll wait for you to find us on Facebook. So we'll get you in those groups for positivity. Um, I can't, I can't, I'm not a fast texter at all either because I'm constantly hitting the wrong key. I miss my Blackberry. <laughs> it's that, it's that Latina thing, huh? <laughs> I bet <laughs> you can talk a hundred miles a minute. I love it. I'm always hitting the wrong key with my fat fingers. I miss my Blackberry that had the actual keyboards. But, you know, Blackberries are dead and gone. I still am not used to a touch screen. I'm, I hit the wrong key. That's so awesome. I wish I knew two languages. I, knew a I know a little French and a little Spanish. Not enough to survive in either one. <laughs> I'd be totally lost. Uh, we went to Mexico once. I was totally lost. You're so slow. I'm slow, too. I'm just forever, and I think faster than I can type, just slow, yeah. I think faster than I can type, and so then my fingers can't keep up. You want to put a key? Yes, exactly. <laughs> exactly, Michelle. Those freaking emojis. How do people do it so quick? I have to go, oh, there's the happy face screen. Oh, there's the heart screen swipe. Oh, there's the doggies and kitties and the plants and oh there's the houses and I can't find and like you said by the time I find just the right emoji the whole it's over I've missed the boat must be I forget where they're at yes yes <laughs> you can relate Linda you've got all our asses kicked on the subject of communication right you saw it somewhere where is it it's not in the puppy and kitty page. Where the hell did it go? You guys are funny. You're so funny. Um, so yeah. Whatever you're facing today, ask for help. Remember to ask for help. Ask for help from the people around you if you can. And if you can't, ask for help from God. God is the source, the, all that is. That Ask for synchronicities in your life. Ask for miracles. We don't. We don't ask for enough miracles. They're there for us all the time. And a miracle is a shift in perception. Yeah, well, I'm going to be laughing out about quick draw text to make te make texty text. <laughs> I love it when a, when a phrase catches me off guard like that. That's the best. That's the best. I'll be thinking about little Bento the dog, too. Bento the dog was on my mind because a dog was clearly loose in um, over in Chatsworth the other day, which is a town about uh, 35 minutes away, and uh, nobody could catch him. So we just had to say a prayer and, yeah. Oh, yeah, I'd love to see pictures of Bento the puppy. Okay, my dears, uh, have a wonderful day. I'll see three. I'll talk to three of you tonight. And then uh, at 8.30. And then I'll see you in the morning before noon for our little chat here. And I'll try and find that piece that I wanted to read to you earlier and I lost track of. 
Much love. Thanks for the laughter. Thanks for being here. Thanks for adding your prayers for Cynthia and her father. And all of us. Let's all let's just say a prayer for all of us today. <laughs> and and tomorrow uh I'll try to remember to bring a deck and pull a card. That'll be fun. We'll do that. Bye, 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 bye. Yes, puppy. Yeah, and let's hope Cynthia can make a, a profile so she can join us. All right, love you. Bye.